Hello, Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions. Today, I want to talk about a tip that I'm providing for those of you that are independent or religious schools that are going to be having auctions in the spring or possibly even next fall. And it's a lesson I learned from my first school auction here in the spring of 2022. I'm not sure that it will apply for all of you, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Now, let's think back to the pandemic at the very beginning of the pandemic when so many schools went virtual. And some of those had an easier time than others. Specifically, your private and your religious schools generally had an easier time than your public schools for obvious reasons. A public school system, it, certainly in an urban area, you're dealing with dozens of schools, all different types of families, not a lot of homogeny usually in those environments. Not everybody's going to have the same sort of access to equipment to go wireless and so forth, not the same resources even for the school to make those changes. Yet in the private uh, or even on the, on the rural side, you may not even have access to a, you may have more homogeny in your school district, but you don't have access to internet. Gosh, I've seen that only recently has the hometown where I'm from started to get really reliable internet for a long time. I had to go down to the library to get that. So in those cases, they were they were struggling. But yet when you've got a school, a private school, independent school, uh, there's a lot of homogeny there. Oftentimes there's more resources to make changes. Um, and we would see, at least in the Washington, D.C. here, a lot of schools that were in some cases able to make that change within days. A couple of my clients had been practicing with virtual environments for other reasons, not due to a pandemic. And so they were able to make that change very rapidly. In other cases, they would convert to a partial in-person or remote learning. So you would have maybe a child going to school Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or in the mornings, but not the afternoons. And that was another way that they were able to serve their clients, which is the, the families, the, the parents. Uh, so in that environment, what we saw was a lot of the public, not a lot, but a chunk of public school families who wanted to have their children in in-person learning moved their children over and started to pay tuition at these private schools. Again, this is the DC area I'm speaking to, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, based on what I've read that this is true in a lot of other urban areas as well, where you've got a lot of um, access to public, excuse me, private and independent schools. Some areas don't have those schools, but if you do, that you may have seen that shift as well. So consequently, we've got now a lot of prior public school families that are now in private, independent religious schools. Now, why does that impact us in the auction? Well, the way it impacted us uh, in a recent event, and again, this is advice that you might be able to use for your own if you find yourself in similar circumstances. Um, after the event, one of my team members commented that certainly in her area, she was hearing from parents who were unfamiliar with some aspects of the auction. Uh, for instance, we kick off that event with a, a fund a need, raise the paddle, you might call it, mission moment, you might call it. It's when we invite people to make a donation to fund something. It might be something specific, like a playground. It might be something more generic, like just fund the mission. But the point being is that they aren't getting anything. It's not a traditional auction. And she had heard from people in her community, her area of the floor going, what is this? What are people doing? And that was a big jolt to me. Now, certainly as an auctioneer, there are adjustments that I make. If I know that I'm going into a school, maybe it's a first year client for me, maybe it's the first time they've ever done an auction. The way that I present certain things is slightly different than if I've been working with a client for 10 years and they've always done a fund mission or a live auction. Anytime I'm working with a client who is brand new to an auction or brand new to certain elements in the auction, I phrase things a bit differently. I take more time to explain things than I might if I feel like this group already has a very firm grasp on what we're trying to do. And so the lesson for me, and certainly this is what I'm sharing with you as well, is if you've got a change in your population where maybe the guests are new to certain elements of your fundraising or in the auction, or maybe they're brand new to an auction 
you'll want to educate them. You'll want to market it in advance. I know that although I've worked with public schools in the past and even some charter schools, uh, many of the schools that I have been introduced to that are public schools in this area, they aren't doing live auctions or fund needs. The, the fundraising might include a silent auction where the parents come together and bid in silent auction items, but they don't have some of these other components that in your school you might already be familiar with because it's something that's tradition for you. So as as you think about your audience, you certainly want to share that with your auctioneer so they're aware. They may also change some of the way or uh, present some things differently. Again, it all gets done, but the way that you do it might be a little bit different if you know that your audience has shifted. If that demographic has shifted in some way, you do things a little bit differently. And that's what I'll be doing for my school clients going forward. So all of my, my further spring clients here that are having events coming up, um, they'll benefit from my experience here on our first school auction of 2022. Marketing, educating your auctioneer, thinking about that, have your demographics changed? What should you be doing differently to accommodate for that? All good advice there as you move forward in your planning as well. All right. Uh, if you're looking for additional information, you can certainly head over to the redappleauctions.com website, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be alerted if you hit the bell to my new videos, which generally are every two weeks. I look forward to supporting you in your fundraising gala and good luck to you as you plan for your benefit auction.